Pink Poodle Crafts, join the Poodle Pack. It's time to get creative and make you laugh. Make your own art today. Pink Poodle Crafts is the way. What a good boy. Hello, crafty friends. How you doing today? Um, today I'm going to show you how to use something called mosaic cement. Um, well, it's really what it is, is it's a white cement. And as you can see, it looks like plaster of Paris. Um, it's nice and white, but it's definitely not plaster of Paris because plaster of Paris, see how thin this is? Plaster of Paris would have broke. I, I could have never gotten this out of the mold and I'm going to, I'm going to demonstrate that in a little bit, but this is because it's cement, it's much stronger. It almost sounds like metal, don't it? Um, it's much stronger than, pla than plaster. So you get much better. Um, you get much better detail. You get, um, it's not chalky like plaster is. Um, and it's much more stable and sturdy. I even have this little dish that I made. These little faces, these are all made with the cement. Now typically I can make these little faces with plaster and they usually come out okay because they're small and they're a little bit thicker and they're not like, there's nothing thin and like, you know, like these thin breakable pieces, you know, on it. So these, would work would be about the only thing I could do with plaster. I, I don't have very good luck with plaster. Um, another thing I could do is like this would probably be okay with plaster, but I'd have to be very careful with it and pretty much baby it the entire time I had it. Um, like I could never make this with plaster and have it be, you know, something I can actually use to put like change in because unless I painted it and put a lot of coats on it, like this, you can use right away and it's not going to, you know, it's, it's cement. So it's not going to, you know, it's going to have much more sturdiness than plaster. So I want to demonstrate it for you and, t and show you all about it because I want to get you hooked on it because it's a lot of fun. And you can use all your molds with it, like your Prima molds or just whatever molds you have. You can, you can it pretty much... Unlike, you know, like resin, you have to use certain molds. Um, you can use all kinds of molds with this cement, um, kind of like you can plaster because it doesn't stick to anything really. Um, so the specific kind that I have and really the only kind that you can really get um, that is the white cement like this. Um, and I don't know if I can tip the thing too much, but I'm going to show you on the computer in a second. But it's called um, Jennifer's Mosaics uh, Stone Cement, and it's indoor. This is specifically for indoor things. It's not meant to be like out in the weather. This is a big 20 pound tub of it. Um, but the top of it's like dusty. It's not meant to be like for stepping stones and stuff like that. So the, she, this Jennifer person does make a outdoor cement as well. So if you like wanted to make things like flower pots for outside and stuff like that and stepping stones and whatnot, you would get the outdoor version. But what's nice about this is like in comparison to like regular cement, which is cheaper, um, this gives you more detail because it doesn't... Like more, uh, regular cement is more rough and this is much smoother and you get much more detail with it. Whereas regular cement, you can use it for a lot of things, but for things like this, it may not come out as nice. You could probably do that dish that I made. That dish would probably come out fine. Uh, or it definitely would come out fine. Um, but anything with a lot of detail, you'd want to use this stuff with um, for that. And I'll show you on the screen so that you know where to get it from because I know I get asked where to get it from. Um, so 
So I'm going to show you. So this is Plaster of Paris. You can get this on Amazon, $7.98 for an eight pound bucket, which is I think the bucket I have right here. Um, yep, this is the eight pound bucket. Oh, you can't see it. Uh, this is the eight pound bucket. So, but I, I'm telling you right now, don't bother with Plaster of Paris because you'll never, it's, you'll never want to use Plaster of Paris again after you've used this stuff. And yes, this, the Jennifer's is more expensive, but it is way more worth it because the Plaster of Paris, I just always had terrible, terrible results trying to get most of my molds to work with it. Um, now you can get the Jennifer's Mosaic Stone Cement on Amazon, but the big one like I have, the big 20 pound one, is $66.95. Now when I got it, it was like 50 bucks. So the price had gone up. Um, but the thing is, you can get it cheaper places too. And they also sell a smaller bucket that's just two pounds, which isn't gonna give you very much, but it's a good starter thing. They also have the outdoor cement on um, on Amazon for $50.95. But I'll show you where you can get all of this much cheaper. Um, so here's the two pound one. For some reason, Amazon did not have the two pound one. Well, they had it but the shipping on it was uh, like $10 and something. It, they didn't have Prime for that, so it wasn't worth it. So um, Blick has it, Dick Blick has it. This is the two pound bucket. Um, it's $8.75 and shipping is $5.95. So, but they're, they're doing a thing right now, if you use code CFBD, you get 40, um, you get free shipping on orders $45 or more. So if you get the bigger one, um, which this is the outdoor one. Um, hold on a second. I had the indoor one. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Um, if you get the bigger one, it's only uh, the 20 pound is only forty three seventy three with free shipping. You don't, you know what I mean. That's it. That's the price it would be, which is a really good deal. So, if you're going to get the bigger thing of it, do it now while they're having this coupon code to get your free shipping. Um, and then they also have the two pound, like I said, for eight seventy five, but you would pay five ninety five shipping on that. And then back to the outdoor stuff. The outdoor stuff is much cheaper here. On Amazon, the outdoor was $50. Here, the 20 pound outdoor is $27.47. And you can use the outdoor stuff for indoor stuff. It's just weather resistant. Now, um, I think it's just as smooth and everything as the indoor, I believe, but I'm not sure. It might not be. It might not be as smooth as the indoor, which is why the indoor is indoor and that's outdoor because, so I don't know, but you can, you know, try it if you want to make like stepping stones. Oh, it says out of stock expected 810. So it'll be back in stock in five days. Um, but they had it in the, in the two pound one and maybe that one's in stock I don't know we'll see is it or 10 pounds they have 10 pounds and 20 pounds so the, the 10 pounds is also out of stock is that the one I clicked before yeah they're both out of stock until 810 so but still now if you wanted to like for outdoor stuff. You can also get Quickcrete, which you can get at Lowe's for $7.85 for a 10 pound thing of it. Um, or you can get a 20 pound thing for $12.70. Quickcrete is a quick setting cement. The Jennifer's is also a quick setting. Um, so Quickcrete is a quick se setting cement. It's just not gonna be bright white. It's gonna be that cement kind of gray color. So you can do that too. And that will be good for outdoors, obviously. So if you want to make stepping stones, you could do that with that. Um, or 
flower pots or whatever. So anyway, I just wanted to give you all the options. I'll put some links in the description of the video on where you can buy everything so that, you know, you can, you know, buy whichever one you want. So anyway, that's that. I just wanted to give you that information. So I have a little thing that I put some of it in uh, the cement. I'm going to put in some more because I don't think I might not have enough. So I'm going to stick some of this in just to make sure it's filled because I keep the bucket off my desk. We're also going to do the plaster of Paris because I want to show you the difference between the two using the same mold. So just like plaster of Paris, you mix this like exactly the same way um, where you just mix it with water and you, you don't even have to measure it. You can, there's measurements on there, but you don't have to. Um, what I like to do is just eyeball it because it's literally all you, you don't, ha there's no science behind it. You're not going to ruin it. Um, so I'm just going to put that much in there for now. And I'm going to grab a smaller popsicle stick. Because I like the thin ones for this cup. Now with water, you're only going to put a very little amount of water. And usually I pour it into one of these cups. You do not need a lot of water at all. So like that's even, that's way too much water. I'm not going to pour the whole thing in there, but you would just pour a little bit at a time like that and then start mixing because trust me, you'll need like an eighth of the water um, compared to the powder. So just add your water very slowly and it'll clump up a little bit and then you know you can add a little more. You want it to be like pancake batter. So I just keep adding my water slowly and eventually it'll start kind of letting you mix it but you can very quickly go overboard so that's why I say do it very carefully and little at a time I mean obviously you can add more powder but Like right there is probably too much now that I've put that last bit in, but we'll see. And then you just got to break up the clumps. Some people do it where they put the water and then they put the powder in and, and I do it this way. It, the clumps aren't hard to break up once you start mixing it with a stick or something. And use a disposable cup. It's just a lot easier. Just like little, these little Dixie cups are like perfect. You can get them at the grocery store and then some popsicle sticks. Actually, that's pretty good. I just want to break up any major clumps and scrape the sides and scrape my popsicle stick a couple times. Yeah, so that's good. Like a, you know, just like a, and if it's even thinner, it'll be fine. As long as it's not like water thin, but you can make it thinner and it'll be fine. You can make it a little thicker and it'll just, it'll actually set faster. Um, a little thin, uh, if you make it a little thinner or a little thicker, I mean. So here I have, um, a mold, the same mold of the mermaids and there's two, uh, there's two of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the, the, the Jennifer's cement in one side and the plaster of Paris in the other side. So I'm just going to just pour it slowly. Try not to over pour it. Just so you don't have a mess to clean up later. And when you get it poured, you could start kind of moving 
moving it around a little bit to make sure it gets all into <clears throat> all the areas. I'm kind of shifting it around a little bit because I had a little too much in that hand, so I'm moving it down here where I can afford to put a little more. Now, you can get air bubbles in this just like you can on, with Plaster of Paris, but there are ways to avoid the air bubbles, at least to avoid the, the major air bubbles that you could get. And it's pretty easy to do. Oh, you know what I meant to do? I meant to put this on a thing. Like Usually I put it on a book or something, which I'm gonna slide this carefully onto without spilling it onto my book, like so. And you'll notice the top of it, like the, the top layer will seem like it's really watery. Like you see it moving. Don't like think, oh no, it's too thin. It, it, no, it'll be, it'll be just fine. So what I like to do and what you need to do is you need to like, you need to bang it. Like, so I'll, I'll pick it up and I'll like slam it on the table several times. And what that will do is get the air bubbles to all rise to the top. I just want to keep doing that a little bit. I know it's annoying, but. And then sometimes I'll take a pokey tool like this. And when where I know that there's a lot of detail, like the face, I'll kind of gently go in there and just kind of wiggle it around into any of the little deeper cavities where the detail is. And I'll see like little air bubbles start to pop up because I want to get the stuff worked into those little cavities a little bit. And then bang it a little more and it helps and like anywhere there's like little corners or little weird spots I just kind of move it around a little bit so that it and then as I do this I'll get more air bubbles coming up because it's gonna bring up any of those If I spill over a little bit, it's fine. It, it's very easy to sand sand off with like a little nail file, any little spots if you spill over. So don't, don't worry about that too much. Or I, what I'll do is I'll have the book hanging off the end and like knock on the back of the book. And I, you know, I do this a lot because I want to get as much detail as possible and I don't want it to have little air bubbles in it which will make these little holes in the in the cement so as long as you're slamming it straight down you're not going to really do a lot of spilling but giving it some good slams will make it definitely worth the annoyance. So that's good. I'm going to let that sit because now we're going to do the plaster. I'm going to leave it over there and put the plaster in that side. I didn't really, I used pretty much every drop of that. So same thing with the plaster. It mixes exactly the same way. but it is definitely not as reliable. And I'll try like hell to be as gentle as possible. All right, come on, don't be a jackass. Oh God, why is this so hard to open? It keeps like closing on me. Ugh, annoying. That should be good. But you'll see that no matter how gentle I am, there ain't a snowball's chance in hell <laughs> that the plaster is going to come out of there without busting in several places. It just won't. Plaster is way too weak. All right, we'll start with this. I can use the same 
big stick, just wipe it off. And when you mix it, it'll, you'll, you, you know, it feels the same and everything. It's just that the cement is so much stronger and better than plaster. And plaster has a tendency to create heat as it as it sets up and this does too a little bit because I think there's elements of the plaster in it I think there's definitely some you know similarities there's definitely the you know the same kind of ingredients but the cement has other things in it that make it stronger that's the only difference too thick still just a little water you can go from too thick to th too thin real fast with this stuff All right, that's good it's not really it's a little thick still but a tiny bit more water See, this doesn't, this is harder to get like a nice pouring consistency with, I find, the plaster is. Because it doesn't really have that same kind of, it's the same thickness, you can kind of see. But like it doesn't, it clumps more to the stick. So you just kind of got to get it in there and kind of work it around. Because I didn't want to go too much thinner with it, so. I mean, I guess I could. But it is thin. It, it is fairly thin. You see how I'm moving it. It's not. It is like a pancake batter, but it just doesn't want to pour. I can go thinner, but it just it, and it would it would still set up. It just would take forever. So I'll just spoon it in. mess with that didn't I yeah I should have made it thinner I mean I've done things to make it you know like in the past I'd take like some Elmer's glue and mix it in with the the plaster to make it a little stronger and more flexible so it wouldn't break and and yeah that can work a little bit but like I still would never be able to use this mold hell no no matter what I can't use this mold with plaster or any thin mold I always would have a problem I'm really making a mess on this one it's fine I just want to see if I can get it out of here I don't really care about the way it looks because I know it's going to break anyway so it doesn't matter how messy it is <laughs> The damn thing ain't gonna last. Never. And even if I got it out of here, if I tried to st store it and like keep it and use it on a project, it would probably break before I ever got to use it. But I know I won't get it out of here. I know that factually, I won't get it out of here. No matter what. Alright, I probably have too much in there, but I can. If anything, that might help with the thickness of it. But we're going to do the same thing. I just don't want to mess with that by slamming this on a table. Really, it's just to get the detail, so. But I'll do it a little here. Just to smooth it out. And I'm not worried too much about air bubbles with this one because, like I said, I'm not.
I'm not looking for perfection on something that's never going to come out at last anyway, you know. Let me turn it this way and do it. could have probably put more water in there it would have been a little bit easier to work with the plaster but it doesn't really matter it's not going to affect it doing its thing at all so don't really care don't really care not for this one okay so we're going to set that aside and let it cure. I'm gonna move this out of my way so I can get it to go back a little further. And it won't take long, less than 10 minutes, and they'll both be rocks. Well, one will be rock salad, the other one will be like chalk. And then we're gonna do the dish. We're just going to use the cement on the dish. The mold. Oh, I have actually two dishes. I have, or three, actually, I lied. I have this one, which makes a, like, square kind of dish. And then I have, uh, where'd the other one go? Oh, then I have this one, which is the one that makes the, this dish here. And then I have this one here, which makes a little flower kind of dish. So we're going to do those while those are setting up and kind of doing their thing. And I may need to get a bigger thing for this one, a bigger cup. I might need to get a bigger cup for all of them. Do I have a bigger cup on hand? I don't know. I do not know. I thought I had one sitting here. Oh, I know where they are. They're on the back of my door. Hold on one second. Back of the door. Oh, they were back here. There they are. Okay. Start out with that and then just add to it. I know it's going to need a good amount of water because we're making more of the cement. That's, that's really liquidy. It's like not even staying on the thing. And even that would set up eventually because, you know, the water would evaporate out of it and it would set. I can add more water because I'm going to be adding a lot more of the powder, so... But you don't even need molds. You can use, like, you could take two, um, old, like, plastic flower pots. One that's smaller than another one. So, like, if you were to take, um, like, kind of like this, right? On, on a small scale. So, you would 
you would put a, the best thing to do is take a, a garbage bag and put it in the flower pot or plastic or something. And then you'd put your cement in there and then you'd put this in and fill it with rocks and steady it, you know, so that you have room on either side. You know what I mean? And then that would make its own, like it would make its own bowl, if that makes sense. There are videos showing you how to do it. But it's easy. And you just go to, you can like go to the garden center, the dollar store, whatever. Get, just get two pots that fit inside of each other with enough room, though. You know, you don't want them to just fit inside of each other because obviously that's going to be, that's going to be, it's not going to give you a thick enough wall on your pot. So you want to make sure that, you know, you got a bigger one and then a couple sizes down on the smaller one so that it um, fits with plenty of room. And then just take some rocks, some little pebbles or rocks or, you know, glass beads even and put them in the thing or anything you got, coins, to weigh down the... The, the smaller pot inside of the bigger pot. Now obviously I'm only gonna mix enough for one at a time. I'm gonna mix this one first, I think. This might be plenty for that. I remember it took less than I thought it would, so. Maybe I'll mix enough and see if I can fill both of those, these two. about as much cement as I want. Oh. Yeah, that should be good. This one it has to be able to pour pretty well I can't kind of spoon it in if it was too thick you know I got to be able to make sure it pours because it's got to go into the like into even though it's kind of like you know stretchy same with that one this one I could spoon in pretty much because it's open on the back Start by filling this one. Usually the higher you pour something, apparently it, it'll make it, you'll get less air bubbles. At least that's, that, that's true for resin. I'm not sure if it's true for this as well, but. I'm going to use the book. Do I have another book? No. So I'm going to carefully move this off, I think. No, I'm not. That one I'm gone. Need another flat surface.
good enough. All right, so this, I'm just gonna give this some pounding. Give it a good pounding, and I'm gonna stick some more of that plaster in here. I'm also gonna stretch it to help work it into the sides, and if there's air bubbles, it'll help maybe release them. Since it's stretchy, I can do that, like stretch it. Just kinda stretch it, stretch it out. Make sure it gets all into the crevices. I'm going to take what's in here and I'm going to pour a little more in here because I want it to be kind of like way up to that rim. Like almost overflowing. careful now because I could scrape it back in. Just take this and try to put it down because down here because I need this to put the other one together now I could probably still just keep adding to this I don't see why not it should be fine but I need more cement out of the bucket yeah I probably do Pour that in there and see what we got. Poke some holes in it to get that down in there. My mermaid's about set. Yeah. Got like underneath the lip of the cup. I made me a mess. That's what I did. I done did make me a mess. start pounding this thing on the table it's gonna blow that everywhere
I have not used this one yet. <laughs> and you can color this stuff too, and since it dries nice and white, you can get some good coloring with it. So don't be afraid to use your pigments um, or what have you. Do I not have enough? Oh, I do. I'm going to have just enough, I think. Yep. Drop in there, which I'm going to pound this down first a little bit before I try to get the rest of that in there. Just try to get the air bubbles up. See the air bubbles. The thinner it is, it'll still work, right? But it'll it'll take a little longer to set. But it's easier to get the air bubbles out if it's a little thinner. So keep that in mind too. Like a little bit thinner than pancake batter. rest of that in there just mix it and if you let it sit for a few minutes like a minute or two just make sure you mix it before you use it because if you let it sit too long it's going to set up in the cup and you ain't going to be able to use it but if you just let it sit like I did just mix it a second because like some stuff will settle to the bottom and you want to just kind of mix it Stretch it. Oh, I can't do that. I already filled it too much. That's all right. <laughs> Making a mess. That's all right. Luckily, when you make a mess with this, it doesn't take much to fix it. This is a little bit of a flimsy mold, so it's harder to get it to cooperate. It wiggles a lot. Wiggly. It's wiggly. Okay. that bubble there we go all right so like I can't I don't even think I can well I guess I could move it Ooh, carefully that's why I usually use something like this then I can just move the whole thing over when I'm done with it like a book or notebook or if you got like a piece of like a what I usually use is like um like a, a canvas board since I had a bunch of those, I like would use those to move things out of the way with because they're nice and hard. Okay, then we got this. And then we'll be able to take our mermaids out after I mix this up. And that's going to be no good now. Get okay, a new cup. And you can find out exactly how much plaster to use if you were to, here, I can do, do it actually. You take the amount of water that it is to fill this up, which it probably needs more than that because it needs to be sitting here, but I'm afraid I'd spill it. That's how much water you're going to use, which means you're going to put your plaster in. To match the water if that makes sense so you fill it up first and then you do that and then that's how much you need to use that much water and fill that much plaster plaster cement in there so and unlike resin you don't want your thing to be wet with resin but you don't have to get every drop out with the cement so it'll be fine so I would mix this into there and even a little bit more water because, oh, and it just flew across the room at me. It's powdery. I could probably put all that in there because 
just start off with it. Oh. See, like, it's still like water. All that plaster I put in, look, it's still like water. It's like nothing. It's like I didn't even put anything in there. <laughs> because it doesn't take much water, but it takes a lot more of this. Still like water. It's almost like it didn't even make a dent. It's like milk now. It's the consistency of milk. And obviously that's not good. You don't want it that thin. Keep adding. I probably have to add all of this probably. But that's a much bigger mold so of course it's going to take a lot more of the plaster. Hopefully I don't overflow my cup which I may have to switch to this. If I do, because it's possible that could happen. No, actually it'll dissolve in there. It's not gonna really get any fuller than this. Maybe initially as I'm putting the powder in, but once I mix it, it'll go back down, I think. Nah, it'll probably get a little bit higher. It's still very thin. But as the name implies, Jennifer's Mosaic Indoor Cement, whatever, you can use it for your mosaics. Like if you're doing, you know, something that's going to stay inside, like a, if you're going to do like a mosaic table or a tray or something like that, this you can use to, you know, lay your, you know, as your grout and whatnot, or just... Still very, very liquidy. Liquidous, yeah, I might have to switch to this container. Because that's what I'm gonna do actually. I'm gonna pour it into here. Because it's gonna need some more mixing and it's gonna it's gonna need more cement. And I don't want to overflow the cup. So we're going to pour it into here. I'm going to use the bigger stick now. And I'll probably have to get more cement out of the bucket. Starting to get just a little bit thicker, but it's still way too thin. Now I have to get some more cement. Dump a bunch in there. There we go. Now we're starting to thicken. Starting to. It seems like it's thick and then as you start, as soon as you start wiggling it around, it's like, oh, wait, nope, that's still kind of thin. It's getting there though. It's definitely getting there. Still a little too thin. since I didn't put enough water in there to fill it because I was afraid it was going to overflow the container. 
I'd rather have too much because I can always fill other molds with it than too little. Not that you can't just put more on top of it because you, you can go, you know, you can let that sit while you mix some more and then put it on top, but it's better just to do it all in one shot if you can. Now this is a good consistency. A little bit thicker, maybe. But yeah, a little bit thicker. Oh. Just gonna dump all that in. I'm gonna add water anyway. So mix this and see. Because it seems like it's thick, but then as I mix it, it's like starting to thin out. Okay, I can add a little water to this, I think. Yeah. Fun stuff. Good times. All right, let's see if this is enough for that thing, for that dish. This is a good consistency. The last thing I used with this was resin. pouring it from high up. This stuff doesn't really splatter. Oh, I'll use less than I needed. thought I did. Wood. Good. And the only thing is it's a little uneven because probably my table is uneven so I'm going to take a popsicle stick and put it under there because this side is not as full over here. I'll do it over here too because I think it's both sides. There we go, it's a little better. Let me actually do some banging before I do that. Air bubbles. See, like all the bubbles are well, you can't see. Sorry, my camera's it's too light colored, and my camera doesn't like light colored things. There's lots of little bubbles there. You can see it if I pick it up. You can see them a little bit. Okay, that sounds about right. Seems about right. Give this a mix and then fill it, fill it up a little more. Not much, but just a little more. And then stop and kind of see. I just don't want it to overflow, but I want to fill it as high as I can before it'll overflow. Because if I start seeing it run off the side. I think that's about it, and that's fine, because it's just about to run off the side here. And so, we'll see if that'll, we'll see if that'll hold. I'm going to move that over. It's got to stay there, so I'm going to have to push this one over here 
So I'm going to use this little bit that's left. This one's more rigid so I can pick it up. I'm just hoping it doesn't spill because I think my table's uneven. Whoa, it's going to spill. <laughs> there it goes. Ah! <laughs> mayday, mayday. Shoot! Alright, hold on, hold on, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And get the damn baby wipes out of the container and then when you do get it out you get like seven of them at the same time it drives me nuts these cheap ass crappy baby wipes it would be fine if this thing wasn't bent but unfortunately it bent so what i'm going to do is dump out take out some of this clearly it needs it taken out some too much. I overdid it. Just a tad. stopped running over <laughs> then I know I got enough of it out I'm gonna put it over here and continue see if it levels out I think it's, I think it's leveling out now goodness gracious not to do. Don't overfill it. It'll be okay. All right, so now I have some of these other molds here. I've got all different kinds. I've got um, faces and like I've got these like doll faces and stuff. We can use some of those. see where we how far we get there's a piece of resin that came up in there <laughs> it must have been a little straggly piece of resin
something satisfying about pouring these into molds. Stop spilling, please. Pour this, this is kind of deep. Just enough to do this. That's why I don't worry too much about measuring because I usually try to go over the amount I need so that I can fill up some molds, you know, and get some embellishments while I'm while I'm at it. I figure why not? Might as well. Alright, we're gonna bang it. Oh, this one's gonna be that one's too uneven, so we're gonna have to just wait. <laughs> that one's like teetering, that other one. Give it some good wax, don't be afraid. Well, just don't let it jump off the table. Don't want that now. It just loosens any air bubbles that are in there. kind of cleaning up I need to do not that that really you don't have to do that part this one I must, my table must be uneven because it's like I could see it tipping that way so I use popsicle sticks to help me fix that but it's not gonna do a whole heck of a lot of good I'm sure Alright, now while these are drying we should check on the mermaids because they might likely be done. The, the bigger ones and the thicker ones are going to take, you know, longer time. So, so those guys, I'll have to stop the video 
and probably come back to it in about a half hour. Usually like something like that would take like a half hour, 40 minutes to make sure it's completely, you want to make sure it's cold to the touch. Um, like, oh, I didn't even bang this one at all. Let me do that. You'll definitely get out air bubbles if you don't. If it's small like this, you can tap it from the bottom. That does a really good job too. You can also squish it. Just work out any of the air bubbles that may be stuck down. wet so what I might do is yeah even the plaster of Paris which was thicker and that should have set up more is still a little bit needs a little bit more time so what I'll do is I'll stop the video and I will come back when all of them are done and we will take them out so I will be back in a few minutes well for you it'll be okay back we are back we are back and they are all pretty much cool now because that's what you'll know they're you'll know they're ready to go when they're cold um you'll feel it they're like cold on the back so i'm going to start with the mermaids now keep in mind that this one is the plaster and this one is the cement so you still want to be careful because the like the these will even the plaster will get slightly harder over the next couple of days not by much this will though this the, the cement gets harder over like the next couple of days so you just want to gently take them out you know but the thing is like you don't have to be as gentle as you do with this, but I don't think that one's going to make it out of the mold. That's just my, uh, my prediction. I'm going to put a little bit of dried cement on the outside here. There we go. And voila, perfect. Perfect. Now, I'm really going to try to get this out successfully because I, it would be great if I can. I just don't see it happening, but I'm going to try. I'm going to be really gentle. I'll be shocked if this actually comes out. But you got to be like extra specially careful with plaster because plaster is extremely brittle. I need to be able to bend it over here, but I almost like. It's so hard to do because you got to be so careful with plaster. But you also need to make sure you're pushing it away from the thing. Am I actually going to be able to get this out? Oh my god, I'm going to crap. Oh my god, I got it out. Oh my god, I've never been able to get plaster out like that before. It's probably because I let it get so thick on the back. That's shocking. That's so shocking. But trust me, it's I can, It's very, very brittle. I can tell. Like It won't take much to literally bust this, bust an arm off, so... I don't trust it for much of anything. 
But hey, it came out in one piece. That's shocking. That doesn't happen. I guess these are a little, probably thicker than I thought they were even. All right, let's do the clockies. These are pretty easy because the rest of the stuff is all done in the cement. And the cement is much less brittle. It, I, oh, I did this earlier. I broke this earlier. Do you know why? Because it was still wet, but it was, it was almost done, but it was still wet and I moved it and wasn't thinking and it bent. So that's the thing you got to be careful. You can't let the mold bend while, especially while it's curing, especially while it's at towards the end of the curing. So I did that by accident because that's such a tiny little thing. It can be glued back on, but I shouldn't have moved it, but I was trying to arrange things a little bit but but see how thin like it's such a thin area no that wouldn't have happened if i wouldn't have moved that mold though and it was still warm so it was like not at all <laughs> done and i was like dang it <laughs> i knew i did it and then i'll do these little ones because these ones are pretty easy these ones they don't risk if it was plaster i'd still be careful with it see now here's what can happen with an air bubble you see the no end of the nose there it has that like hole now you can fix that by taking a little bit of the plaster and you can kind of take or you know not plaster the cement and mix a little bit and then put it in there and it'll literally fill that into the point where you won't be able to see it or what i like to do is because it's at the very tip i can take like a nail file and I can sh reshape the nose so that that won't be there. It'll make the nose a little smaller, but And I could shape it further as I need to because it's probably a little flat on there. But I can round that back out. Come on. It's because it's so white it's not going to show up. But anyway, that's how you can do that. And the, more of these might have those because ooh, this one's nice. This one doesn't have any. Because a lot of times these faces, because they have such narrow features and stuff, they get air bubbles in them. Oh, not that one's pretty good. That one has one at the side of the nose right there. You see it? Looks like a giant pore. That's best filled in with a little bit of the cement. Which is really, is, it's easier to do than you think it is. And that one's perfect. Cool. Cool. Okay, what else we got? We got this. So this you just do this. And this one's pretty easy because it this is so flexible that you can practically turn it inside out. And see it has a little bit of a one there. But again, take a look at the cement. I could tell this is not completely cured yet. You could tell because look how white that side is. And well, it might not show, but this is very much like not as white as like, you know, like the front of this is whiter than, than this has a more gray look to it because it's still not completely dry. So it needs to dry. 
Now this one was still warm before. This one's nice and cold. Let's see if I can get this one out. I've never done this one in cement. It comes out pretty easy. Usually the cement comes out of the mold pretty easily. A little shaking. Come on, it's coming. Cool, look. Isn't that cool? You can see how it's shiny down there. It's because, it's, again, it's still damp. It needs to dry out a little more. Let's see, you just take this and you would just do your sanding, obviously. You don't have to do it now, but like you wait a day or so, a few hours to let it cure, really, but you would just sand it. And it files real easy with the nail file. Easy peasy. Type of thing. And then you have a nice little bowl that you can paint or do stuff with. Lastly, we have this one, which is not all the way cured but because it's a lot more of a solid piece it'll be fine I mean it's cured enough I've never used this one so Ooh, gotta stretch it stretch it Ooh. oh there's one little hole but holes like I said it's very easy to fix them Ooh, that's, if that's the only hole is on that one side there well there's two of them there's one there's one little one there and one there it's not bad it's like a little you know candle holder oh wait that's supposed to go which way yeah that way isn't that cute like a little votive holder or you could put like a little uh succulent in it isn't that cool that came out really good. Cool. See, easy. Easy to make these fun things with some cement. And once these dry out really well, it'll e they'll be even harder. Much more firmer and more sturdy even after they've dried out for, you know, three days or so. Like if it's if it's something like this, it'll be it'll be less brittle in a few days. But you could use it today. I mean, let it sit like an hour outside like this, and then you can paint it and stuff. Just be careful. So I hope this was informative, and I hope you'll give this a try and get some of this um, Jennifer's mosaic stuff because it's really awesome and uh, much better than plaster, even though that did come out shockingly but that's because that I, I laid it in there really thick and it's probably why it was like practically overflowing the mold so I'm glad it survived but most of the stuff I use don't doesn't survive with plaster and it ends up just being a big disappointment so but this stuff works every time and the only time I ever have an issue is if I play with the mold too much move it around too much while it's curing which is why I usually put things on the book but I grabbed it like an idiot and picked it up and I went dang it and it broke that this little piece on this clock broke off and that was the only thing that broke but That wasn't the cement's fault. That was my fault. But anyway, I hope you'll give it a try. I'll put links in the description to all of the, well, to the different cements that I use, that they that they make. 
but yeah, it's definitely a lot of fun. You can make yourself embellishments, make yourself little projects like this, and you can decorate it and all that kind of fancy stuff. So I hope you'll give this video a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Subscribe, please. And uh, check out my links below in the in description, not just for the products, but I also have a link to my Patreon where we do classes and all kinds of stuff. Um, we're doing a, steam a steampunk project for the, the next class, which will be in about a week or so. Um, and besides classes, we do, you know, uh, live streams and swaps in our group and all, all kinds of good stuff there. So check out the Patreon below. Um, and also I have a Facebook group. If you're not in it, you should join it. It's a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, give me a thumbs up if you don't mind. And I appreciate you watching my video and hopefully I will be back again with something else that's fun. And yeah, thanks for watching everybody. Have a good day. Make sure you do what you love and love what you do and be nice to people. Bye.